Hi folks, it has been a long, long time since I uploaded a video to the Resound Music channel. Uh, the pandemic has gone on, pandemicking, and uh, life has gone on, more or less. There's been a lot of living, not so much life. A lot of life, not so much living. Um, and work for musicians is has been zero. Um, so a lot of us uh, musicians have turned to online teaching. Uh, now, teaching has been a part of my, my professional musical life for the last 24 years. It's not a new thing to me. Online teaching is a new thing to me. Uh, I dabbled in it maybe six years ago, um, and the formatting wasn't very good for the uh, sessions. There was a lot of latency and uh, compression issues with the sites that I was working with, and so I abandoned that. Um, but now, I mean, because a lot of people are making their income off teaching online, um, what I wanted to do was share some of the things that I myself have learned about how to teach music online, not as a music instructor, but as an audio guy. Now, audio is something that I'm super picky about, like super picky about. Um, I'm a really miserable guy to get along with if even the audio on the hockey game isn't right, because it means a lot to me. Um, almost more than the video portion of these things does. Now, I realize for online teaching, um, a large part of what we're doing is showing how, but you also need to have people understand how to listen to what they're doing. Now, I'm wearing headphones now. I don't need to wear headphones, but I like to keep exact 100% tabs on what's going on with my computer at all times. So I keep my headphones on because I can't have my microphone and my speakers on at the same time. Um, if you've ever tried that, you'll know that it doesn't really work out too well for you. Um, anyway, so uh, about a month ago, I had an online lesson um, with a fellow from the United States. He's from the West Coast of the United States. I'm uh, closer to the East Coast of Canada. And uh, it was really cool to be able to set this thing up. So we messaged back and forth uh, through Facebook Messenger and ended up setting up some times and, you know, we met up and whatever. One of the first things that he said to me, even before I started playing anything or before we started playing anything, he was he, he leaned into the camera and he goes, oh man, your audio is so great. What are you doing for audio? And I said, oh, well, thank you for noticing. I really, really appreciate that. Um, what most people are doing for their online lessons, as far as live lessons go versus pre-recorded, is they're using their tablet or their phone or their webcam with the built-in camera on their laptop. And to me, that doesn't cut it. If I was to sign up for uh, music lessons with somebody and they were using that kind of format, our sessions would have gone one session and that's it. Because I need to hear what's going on. And if somebody is playing with an amplifier on in their room and I'm hearing the room around them, and I'm hearing something rattling in the room if they're playing bass or low end on the keyboard, or I'm hearing other people in the house at the same time. No, I know life happens. You've got families. I mean, I, you, you're not going to blame the kids. Well, blame the kids. It's their fault for making noise. But I mean, you don't want to hear that as a client, right? You want to hear what you should be listening for. So what I do, I'm blessed enough to have... A little section about one eighth of my attic space up here at my home dedicated to music and music only um, I've put a lot of time and energy and effort into proper sound dampening you can see these two black panels over my shoulders there's also I'm gonna tilt my camera up don't get dizzy right up there there's another bass trap up there and there's my microphone um, we'll get into that later uh, carpeting on the floor i've got sound dampening above my my workstation area here to keep the reflections off the ceiling so that when i'm interfacing with somebody uh for music purposes using live audio i'm not l making them listen to the sound of my kitchen 
or making them listen to the echo of a large room while I'm trying to shout at the laptop for them to be able to hear me above the ambient noise going on around me. So I'm blessed that way. And I know maybe not everybody is set up that way, but there are a few things that you can do to really, really do a lot to take care of those things that are otherwise very distracting and just otherwise not very good if you're trying to um, talk about audio things, uh, sound things, music things with somebody on the internet. So when the pandemic started, I had a, uh, a real push on to get things going online as far as my lessons go. I went from about 50 students per week down to six, um, which would be, you know, for the normal person, uh, doing a nine to five job Monday to Friday as if your boss were to say, okay, I'm only letting you come in from like eight in the morning till maybe 1130. Maybe we'll just cut your shift short before lunch. Um, and that's it for the week. And that's all you're going to get paid for. Um, so I had a real push on to get some stuff going online. So I invested in a fairly decent webcam. It was about 130 bucks. I got it on the, uh, one of the main online shopping places. Um, it does 1080p, which is what you're seeing me in right now. It has a webcam built in right now, which I'm not using. What I'm going to deal with right now is how to get the audio matched up with your video. So the room I'm in right now is my musician's man cave, I guess you could say. I have my audio recording software on my computer over here. I've got my guitars up here. I've got a really nice set of active studio monitors the subwoofer, all the rest of that stuff, all the gadgets and gizmos and, and shiny, pretty things I need are up here. So this is my teaching studio as well. So what I use when I'm recording um, is what's called an AD or analog digital interface. You'll probably see them all over your marketplaces and local buy and sell pages online. Uh, the one I use is a, a company called Steinberg. The model is a UR44 and it has four inputs across the front and four, I believe, across the back for line level inputs. But what I'm using right now is two inputs on the front. I'm running one for my microphone, which you caught a peak of above my head, and I have my bass, which is over my shoulder there, um, plugged into another output. And what that lets me do is take the sound from my microphone, my proper um, studio quality audio microphone, and put that through my computer as a sound that you'll hear rather than you hearing the sound of a, a crappy webcam microphone or laptop microphone now if that's all you have that's great and that's you know if you're making a living at it that's good but you can deliver your clients a whole lot more quality for their investment with just a small investment on your part this interface cost me under two hundred dollars i bought it probably five or six years ago when it was just new uh, you can find all kinds of AD interfaces online for around fifty to sixty dollars used. They're all good. They all basically do the same thing. And if you're just dealing with uh, basically voice and an acoustic instrument or something, or an even electronic instrument uh, over online lessons, it's totally fine. Um, the microphone I'm using now. I'm going to pick up my tripod here. I hope you don't get dizzy and just tilt it up. Uh, the microphone I'm using here is about 18 inches above my head just a, basically a little above my forehead um, it's an AKG C3000B I bought this new in 2004 or 5 or something like that when they were brand new it was about 700 bucks it was a massive investment for me at the time um, even today it would be a massive investment for me uh, but it is a super amazing microphone it's a large diaphragm condenser mic um, a condenser mic means it needs phantom power uh, so the interface almost every interface will have phantom power on it now what it is is it, it applies a 48 volt charge to the capsule in the microphone which makes it super intense uh, you get a lot more crispness and detail from a condenser mic because it's like it's like charged and waiting for a signal um, you get a much more crisp signal that way than you do from a regular handheld dynamic mic or especially one of the dreaded headset microphones. Um, so when I have this thing placed above me here, um, you don't see it for one thing. Um, and also I can look at the camera and speak right at the camera and things, if I were to say things like peanut butter, you don't hear that, that, that normal pop, that 
It's called a plosive when you're speaking into a microphone held at close proximity. Um, it's a horrible sound. It's not good for your speakers. It's not good for any of the pieces of your signal chain to go firing these high-powered bass frequencies through it when you pop the microphone. So I don't need a pop filter on it, which is another thing I don't have to get. I have one, but I don't need one because it's not facing my face, so to speak. Um, it's also sort of equidistant from... Uh, my mouth to my guitar to my microphone away so if I was to play a chord and speak at the same time what I don't have to do is I don't have to shout at the microphone you know I could even sing if you wanted me to sing I could sing <laughs> and I can sort of manually adjust my volume that way a little bit but I don't really have to um, the the trouble with using laptop microphones or webcam based microphones is they hear the entire room at the same time this microphone's pointing right at me so it's going to hear the room but the room has some some good treatment to it so it's not a boomy or echoey room it's like you know when you're on a speakerphone and you're talking to somebody who's in their kitchen and you hear the whole kitchen and it's it's distracting to try and hear what they're saying because you hear the whole kitchen around them that kind of thing you don't want that it's giving your clients a quality product just as far as the presentation goes, not even touching the quality of the information you're giving them. You want them to be able to hear you and understand you and appreciate the quality of the sound that you're playing for them to learn how to play. Um, so with the microphone plugged into the interface, it goes USB into my computer like everything else does. But on the interface, there's some really cool things. There's a thing called a loop back function. Now, on the uh, when I installed the interface to my computer it said do you want to install the F basic effects suite it's called and basically what that and I said yes um, it put a little icon in the tray of the bottom of my computer screen that says UR44 and if I open that up what I get is this really cool four channel mixer that comes up that shows me all of the EQ settings I have um, some reverb settings, um, delay settings, uh, EQ, compression, all kinds of cool stuff that I can add to this microphone and that's the sound that you end up hearing. So what I've done to this mic, I click on the loopback function, uh, I put what's called a high pass filter on it which means that only the high sounds will get through. Now the high pass filter is um, effective from 120 Hertz on down I guess you could say so everything below 120 Hertz like the sound of kids running by or um, you know like tonight it's really really windy here uh, above my head is a skylight and if I would take my headphones off I can hear the wind rushing by the skylight but with my headphones on and the microphone with the high pass filter on the software is filtered out that rumble so if you listen you don't hear it which is really cool again that's a consideration for your clients they don't have to hear the ambient noise that you're dealing with as well I put a little bit of compression on there just for you know those moments when when maybe I would um, be uh, playing and singing something a little bit louder it's not going to distort on on the clients and um, I have a tiny little bit of reverb I have 1.6 seconds of a room reverb on which if I were to like click you don't really hear like echo, echo, echo. Um, echo and reverb are different. Remember that. Um, 1.6 seconds of a room reverb on, which basically has just thickened my voice a little bit. Will anybody notice that? <clears throat> Probably not. Uh, some of the audio nerds out there may be going to run for their headphones right now and go, oh, I'm going to listen for the reverb, right? And maybe they'll hear it, maybe they won't. But what it does, every radio station, every TV station that has a broadcast with a voice, has put reverb on that voice. It makes it seem a little bit larger, which kind of holds your attention a little bit more um, and engages you more. So as, as a music instructor, when I'm talking to people, um, if I have this thin sort of weedly kind of voice echoing in some random room in my house, it's gonna be really hard for them to listen to me because what I'm gonna to have to do, I'm gonna to have to raise my voice, I'm gonna to have to almost shout at the camera uh, for them to hear me you don't want that so with the um with the guitar acoustically it works really really well um, 
also with the trusty uh, Borg ukulele here. Same deal. My my mouth and the and the ukulele are equidistant from the uh, microphone, which is basically it's about eighteen inches from my face. So you're going to hear me speaking clearly. You're going to hear my instrument clearly, uh, without a lot of effort on my part to crank up the volume or like play really really loud so you can hear me and see me. Um, the other cool thing, I, I teach bass as well. Uh, with this loopback function, what I've done is I've plugged my bass into channel one here. Uh, my microphone is on channel three with the phantom power turned on. Uh, this has phantom power applied in banks. So it's either one and two or three and four that get the phantom power. So I've got my microphone in three and I've got my bass plugged into one. Now, I've had I have many bass students online and one of the things that I, I have happen when when I say okay at the beginning okay let's check your tuning notes for reference they've got their amplifier in a room um, which is fine I'm not expecting everybody to run out and buy a, a an 80 interface for for the purposes of lessons but they've got their amplifier in a room maybe pointing in some random direction they've got this tiny little microphone that's maybe an eighth of an inch wide trying to pick up these large bass frequencies it's not going to work it can't it never will and it never has worked you'll pick up some of the overtones but you won't hear the bass so what i can do when i have my bass plugged in here let me turn around and get it this is my new favorite bass this is a squire uh five string jazz bass um so i have my bass plugged in now what you're not going to hear you're not going to hear, uh, if I was in my kitchen, you're not going to hear dishes rattling. Or if I have a snare drum in the room, you're not going to hear the snare rattling. What you're hearing is the sound directly from this cable to the interface, to the computer, to you. integrity of the sound is there. So if you're trying to describe tone to somebody, uh, whether it's strumming the guitar over the sound hole or strumming closer to the bridge, or if you're trying to describe the tonal controls that you have on an electric guitar. Um, so here's my, my setup that I like on this is both pickups wide open, tone rolled about halfway back. So here's no tone roll off. Here's full tone roll off. You can hear it. You know what I'm talking about at that point. Um, here's just the neck pickup. Here's just the bridge pickup. So when you're trying to describe tone to somebody, if you can't convey that tone by example, they're not going to know what you're talking about. Especially if you're a vocalist. If you're talking about subtleties in... Um, some sort of pitch control or or dynamics when you're dealing with the microphone you cannot do that when you're just talking to a laptop you can't you can try and somebody's going to go on the other and they're going to go okay all right i get it they won't because it doesn't come across so it's not necessarily incumbent upon the students necessarily to invest in this gear but as a as a music instructor online some of the, the most incredible interactions that you can give to somebody are to demonstrate your tonal control over your instrument whether it's an acoustic instrument like a ukulele electric instrument like a bass or your voice if you can't show how to control tone you're only really giving about half of, of the information that you need to show um, yeah and it's not expensive like i said you know the microphone was a big investment for me but you can get a cheaper microphone i've seen them for like under 25 dollars on on the big um online retailers and they're okay they do a good job they do way better than your laptop computer way 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 better you can probably find an interface for around 50 or 60 bucks 
on your local marketplace um, on social media stuff. Um, so for under hundred dollars, you can get yourself set up to deliver proper quality audio for the people who are paying you to give them proper quality instruction and proper quality audio. Um, and it's not like you're trying to deliver, um, you know, dark side of the moon kind of thing. You're not talking about, we're not talking about that. We're just talking about good audio to do your online lessons by. And, um, it's not a huge investment. We're not talking audio file quality here, um, which is another bit of a bugaboo that I have. We're just talking really good audio so that your, your listeners, your students, your clients will hear you clearly, concisely, accurately, and they're going to know exactly what you're talking about when you're talking about tone, um, the subtleties of things like a vibrato. <laughs> Um, a proper note versus a buzzed note. Nobody wants to hear that, right? And it comes across crystal clear when you when you have the right way of interfacing audio. Um, I've actually checked out a lot of these um, online lessons that people are doing through YouTube, um, hoping to pick up, you know, two million subscribers to to, you know, by showing you how to play an E chord a couple of different ways. Um, and it's a guy sitting at his laptop in, a, in an echoey room. Um, it doesn't sound good. Um, it's just not, it's not what your clients deserve. Um, so with just, you know, like I'm saying, just like a basic investment, uh, a bit of time, a bit of research, um, you can, you can deliver a much more quality product. And I'm not saying that I have all of the answers. I'm hoping that I have some of the answers maybe that you've been looking for because um, I've been doing this full on for a year now. Um, so I've taken my, my studio audio guy skills and brought them to um, studio quality lessons online as far as the interactions go. So like I always tell students when they when they go to when we're doing our lessons, like if you're if you're doing this through your iPad, awesome, fine, put on headphones, then you're really going to hear what we're talking about. And they're like, oh, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, yeah, it is really cool. <laughs> um, there's, there's just a lot of things about um, music and audio that are overlooked until you hear the difference. And when you hear the difference, you never really want to go back. It's like, I don't know, if you were to use a... a a, a video analogy it's like you know watching things on a worn out old vhs versus a blu-ray i mean you don't want to go back to the worn out old VH vhs unless you have some strange sentimentality towards it but anyways that's just me rambling so that's all i wanted to share really some really easy tips on how to get good quality audio for your online music lessons thank you for watching folks uh like and subscribe if you want uh, if you don't want, then you don't want. Uh, but thank you for watching if you've made it this far. Bye-bye.